Yellowstone area and super volcanoes. The geologists found insights from studying Wyoming granite. They found movements of magma rising and falling beneath the surface of the earth. This is by University of Wyoming. Scientists gained supervolcano insights from studying the Wyoming granite. Geophysical monitoring of the ground above active supervolcanoes shows that it rises and falls, of course, as magma moves beneath the surface of the earth. Even the Yellowstone is heaving and breathing, uh, inflating and deflating in certain areas, uh, especially in the caldera, but recently in the Lake Hebgen on the northwestern part of Wyoming, the uh, area there is inflating with magma. Now, silica-rich magmas like those in the Yellowstone region and along the western margin of North and Southern America can erupt violently and explosively, throwing vast quantities of ash into the air, followed by slower flows of glassy, viscous magma. But what do the subterranean magma chambers look like, and where does the magma originate? Those questions can't be answered directly at modern active volcanoes. Instead, a new National Science Foundation NSF funded study by University of Wyoming researchers suggests that scientists can go back into the past to study the solidified magma chambers where erosion has removed the overlying rock, exposing the granite underpinnings. And this is what exactly the geoscientists did. The study and its findings outlined in the paper published in the American Mineralogist Journal of Mineralogical Society of America. Every geology student is taught that the present is the key to the past, says Carol Frost, director of the NSF Division of Earth Sciences on leave from University of Wyoming, where she's a professor in the Department of Geology. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. And here they are studying the exposed granite. So the uh, Carol Frost says, in this study, we use the record from past to understand what's happening in modern magma chambers. One such large granite body is the 2.62 billion year old Wyoming batholith. It extends more than 125 miles across central Wyoming. University of uh, Wyoming master's degree student David Bogdanos traversed the granite Shirley and Laramie Mountains to ex examine the body, finding remarkably uh, uniform areas with similar biotite granite throughout. Bagdana says, it was monotonous. He worked on the project with Frost, and he said only minor variations were observed in granite near the roof and margins of the intrusion. This homogeneity indicates that the crystallizing magma, magma was generally well mixed. However, more subtle isotopic variations across the batholith shows the magma formed by melting of multiple rock sources that rose through multiple conduits and that homogenization was incomplete. Studies of the products of supervolcanoes and their possible batholith counterparts at depth are a vibrant, controversial area of research, said Brad Singer. He's professor at Department of Geoscience, University of Wyoming, Madison, sorry, University of Wisconsin, Madison. And he says the research by Frost and her colleagues, of course, uh, Wyoming University, offers a novel perspective gleaned from the ancient Wyoming batholith, suggesting that it is the frozen portion of a vast magma system that could have fed supervolcanoes like those which erupted in northern Chile, southern Bolivia, during the last 10 million years. The possibility of such a connection, while intriguing, does raise questions. The high silica and potassium contents of Wyoming granites differ from the bulk magma compositions erupted by these huge Andean supervolcanoes. This might mean that the Wyoming batholith records the complete solidification of potentially explosive magma at depth without the eruption of much, with much high silica rhyolite, Singer says. Notwithstanding, 
This paper will certainly provoke a deeper look into how ancient Archaean granites can be used to leverage understanding of the volcanic plutonic connection at supervolcanoes. Large bodies composed solely of bi biotite granite are more common in the Neo Archaean eons, that's 2.8 billion to 2.5 billion years ago, than in younger terrains. The reason may relate to higher radioactive heat production in the past, which provided the power to drive extensive granite formation, the University of Wyoming researcher said. And this is from University of Wyoming on uh, phys.org. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support.